The next paper is patient reported resolution of gastroesophageal reflux disease after adjustable gastric banding, one year interim results of lap band AP exper uh, experience study, a prospective multicenter open label longitudinal patient observational study, and the presenter is actually Dr. Okerson. Good afternoon. Thank you to the organizers of the meeting for having me, uh, giving me the opportunity to present this data. Our first author, George Woodman, uh, had a conflict with he and his wife's anniversary, so he wisely perhaps chose to attend that event instead. Um, I'm actually an internal medicine physician working for Allergan in the Medical Affairs Division, um, uh, so on the research side. So some disclosures up front, as I mentioned, myself and also a co-author, Michael Ophelein, we are both employees of Allergan, both still practice medicine. Uh, Dr. Ophelein is a urologic surgeon. The study is sponsored by Allergan, and it uses the lap band AP system, which is manufactured by the company. However, the data and the statistics for the study were collected and determined, calculated by an independent clinical research organization. The co-authors in this particular paper are investigators in this particular study. So as some background, we know that bariatric surgery has been established as an effective treatment for severely obese patients. At the time of this study, the BMI, the low BMI limit was 35. As you know, it's been recently lowered to 30 to 40 with comorbidities. And a number of comorbidities, including reflux disease, have been associated with obesity. So our objective was to look at our one-year data, looking at improvement and resolution of reflux disease after placement of an adjustable gastric band, and also look to determine whether the amount of weight loss correlated with resolution or improvement of those symptoms. So methods, this was a five-year prospective uh, multicenter observational study, over 500 patients in 40 centers. Um, the inclusion criteria basically are the directions for use at the time. Uh, the surgical technique that was used, all patients had the pars flaccida approach, which is distinctly different from a couple of papers recently where they used the older paragastric technique. And 94% of these were performed as an outpatient. So how did we assess outcomes? Outcomes were assessed by resolution of symptoms, which also had to be accompanied by no further medication for that disease or comorbidity. And then this was refereed, if you will, by an independent outside uh, clinician. So here's our results. Uh, we had at baseline at the time of the data analysis, 165 patients who reported GERD that required daily therapy. 112 of these had sufficient information, that is baseline data and one year data, remembering it's a five year study, so that we could actually determine these outcomes. So in this graph, 93% of patients had uh, resolution or improvement of gastroesophageal reflux disease which was driven by 69% had complete resolution of her, their symptoms with no further medication. 24% had improvement, seven patients, 6% had no change, and one patient actually got worse. Now, when you look at trying to correlate this with the amount of weight loss, the mean percent of excess weight loss in the light gray, the mean change in the BMI in the darker gray, uh, if you look on the, uh, the two left columns here for reserve, resolved and improved, uh, those numbers look pretty similar, so there was really no correlation. There's a suggestion in those who had no change that they lost a little bit less weight, but statistically there was no difference between these groups. Now that may have been due in part to the small n in this particular group. Uh, the time course of the weight change looks uh, very similar. So the mean change in percent excess weight loss on the left and the mean change in BMI over on, on the right and you can see that the curves continue to slope and there is not yet a nadir in this particular study. Some other endpoints, again, we looked at other comorbidities. Type 2 diabetes had remission or, or improvement in 88% at one year, hypertension 78%, hyperlipidemia 57, sleep apnea 69%, and depression 71%. <clears throat> we also measured quality of life by a validated measure of in patients who uh, have obesity and this was significantly improved in all of the components of that uh, survey. And 92.5% of patients were satisfied or completely satisfied. Serious adverse events numbered eight, and this was for the entire study population. There were no patients with reflux disease who suffered any of these particular uh, adverse events. Now, there are some limitations to this data. Uh, the, these outcomes are patient uh, and clinician reported and uh, based also on medication use. 
So we did adjudicate these with an external clinician, um, but again, we don't have uh, lab data for diabetes. For example, we don't have A1Cs. Um, also, there's the percentage of concurrently conducted crural approximation is not determined in this particular study, but it is reported by the investigators to be approximately 25 to 30 percent of subjects. So in conclusion, uh, patient report outcomes of reflux disease, including symptoms and medication requirements, were significantly improved in patients who had reflux disease and obesity. Looked like the improvements were somewhat greater in people who have greater weight loss, but these are not statistically different. Again, this may be secondary to a small n. We'll have two-year data coming up soon. We can look at a larger population base, and maybe that'll inform us a little better. Um, other obesity-related comorbidities were similarly improved. So uh, laparoscopic adjustable gastric banding may offer uh, an important therapeutic approach to treating reflux disease in patients with obesity as well as other comorbidities. One other comment that I forgot to mention, um, interestingly, a lot of clinicians perceive gastric banding as actually causing reflux, so I think this data is important, especially in the primary care community so they understand the value of, help to develop the value of bariatric surgery for their patients with obesity and refer to appropriate surgeons. Thank you very much for your attention. Questions? San Antonio, Texas. Uh, Dr. Dr. Hempens from Belgium published a paper a few years ago showing that at one year they have a very nice resolution of GERD, but by the time you get out to three years, it tends to increase. Why, why do you think that is? And this is with banding? With, with gastric know, banding. You know, it's difficult to say. I, I, um, it's a single center study. Um, his data, at least if I base it on the most recent paper, used older bands that had a different technology. So as you have filled those, if you overfill them, you tend to have more restriction and potentially for more reflux or more dilatation. But that would be a, a possibility that the newer technology and the newer approach may actually reduce those, the incidence of that. Yes. Uh, Bill Richards from Mobile. Uh, it's going to be critical to know whether or not you, the surgeons fixed uh, any hiatal hernia. I think that's a critical factor in your determination of whether or not this therapy is going to be successful. Number two, we know that if you over-tighten the band, patients will get regurgitation and reflux symptomatology. How many of those patients in the non-responders, the patients that got worse, were in fact over-tightened, got esophageal dilation and things like that, or had presence of hiatal hernias? Right. So those are two good questions. So the first off, um, you know, as I stated, we are not aware exactly of the percentage of the patients who had that cruel approximation. Um, so that is certainly a limitation and something we would like to look into and perhaps in the two-year data actually look at the operative reports and get that specific number. So that's one. The second question regarding a dilatation, whether it was over-tightened. Um, again, none of the serious adverse events occurred in this group of patients with reflux. Um, and you know, certainly if you over-tighten a band, that's going to be an issue. So I think it really highlights the importance of appropriate follow-up. And this is a clinical study, so patients are followed on a regular basis uh, every month for the first six and then every six weeks for the next six. So crucial to their success is regular follow-up and proper adjustment. So I appreciate that point. I think Dr. Yes. Sherman has a question, then we'll take a last question over here. A quick question. Uh, the, your study was looking primarily at patients that had GERD. Uh, two questions. One is, it was to clarify, the confirmation of GERD symptoms were based on reporting. Correct. Okay, so there was no radiological assessment. That is correct. Uh, or manometric assessment. Correct. And secondly, in this large group of patients that did not have GERD, uh, and I know it's a little bit outside the scope of this paper, but how many patients that did not initially have GERD developed GERD over the period of this study? I don't have that number, but the, the numbers quite small. It's just a few under 10, so I don't know the exact number there. Last question. Jeff Conn from Melbourne, Australia. That leads nicely into my question, actually, is in, the, in my observation is that patients who do get recurrent GERD symptoms or GERD symptoms at all in the presence of a band tend to be having a complication. I don't think GERD's normal with a band. Um, how many of these people had erosion, slips, prolapses, and the like? Right. Again, in this particular, th these data set, there were no no serious complications, no erosions or slippage in this particular patient population, but recognizing that that is a potential complication with adjustable gastric banding. Okay, thank you very much, appreciate it.